Hello, this is Mark Van Gelder um, of SubvertGov.com. I am presenting my anarchist rebuttal to President Obama's second inaugural address um, here on January 21st, 2013. And uh, so here we go. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my great privilege and distinct honor to introduce the 44th President of the United States of America, Barack H. Obama. All right, that was uh, Senator Chuck Schumer, uh, Democratic Senator of New York, um, very well connected to Wall Street, and it's not really uh, a surprise that they would pick him to introduce Obama, um, since Obama pretty much is in the tank for, for Wall Street, despite all of his rhetoric. We've been working on this inaugural address since December, tweaking it over the weekend. It's expected to last 21 minutes as we watch from the west front of the U.S. Capitol building. On this There's a, a lot of people at this crowd. Apparently it's not as big as the 2009 crowd, but there are still a lot of people. Um, there's also a lot of flags everywhere. Um, not just people waving flags, but like flags pinned everywhere on this, you know, in this uh, uh, inaugural shindig, so. January 21st. Oh, too many flags for my taste. Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay, uh, he knows his name. Quit, just, you don't need to keep chanting it. I mean, it's, it, yeah, his name's Obama. I think he knows that. Vice President Biden, Mr. Chief Justice, members of the United States Congress, distinguished guests, and fellow citizens. Each time we gather to inaugurate a president, we bear witness to the enduring strength of our Constitution. Uh, no. <laughs> like, okay, so with Bradley Manning's arrest, we've had the Sixth and Eighth Amendments of the Constitution pretty much stripped away. Uh, with the Patriot Act, we've had our first, or not our first, but our, our Fourth Amendment stripped away. Um, we're in the process of having the Supreme Court to decide whether um, uh, silence is, is basically evidence of guilt. So that could be uh, the Fifth Amendment being stripped away. And we've had him with uh, his latest gun control efforts that is sort of stripping away the Second Amendment. So no, this is not a testament to our enduring Constitution. We affirm the promise of our democracy. Democracy is collectivism. We recall that what binds this nation together is not the colors of our skin, or the tenets of our faith, or the origins of our names. What makes us exceptional, what makes us American, is our allegiance to an idea articulated in a declaration made more than two centuries ago. By a bunch of white slave owners who own property. We hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal. Um, all men are not created equal. If somebody is born with, an in, with, if somebody is born with less money than another person, by definition, they are not born equal. Um, so. Also, if one person doesn't have the same political connections that other people do, they are also not born equal. That they are endowed by their creator. With endowed by their creator. I mean, I'm an atheist. We're not endowed by our creator for anything. Certain unalienable rights. Apparently they are alienable because uh, we're having them stripped away as we speak. That among these are life liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. 
Okay, life. Uh, Obama ordered a drone strike on Abdul Rahman al Awlaki, who was um, the son of a terrorist, and uh, the United States government. He was a under, he was a 16 year old um, American citizen. Uh, drone striked in Yemen, and he uh, was not accused of any crime. Was not suspected of being a terrorist. As I said before, his father was was a suspected terrorist and was killed earlier. And uh, the Obama administration's, uh, their explanation for the attack uh, was that he should have had a more responsible father. When it comes to liberty, uh, we do have, you know, that, that is also an alienable right because, as I said before, we are, we are having our rights, you know, that are guaranteed to us by our Constitution, having those stripped away. And the pursuit of happiness, that's also not um, an alienable right. If, if my idea of happiness is uh, going out and working in a, in a market, um, I should be free to do so without having to um, apply for business licenses, um, without having to submit to regulations. Um, you know, even if my idea of happiness is to shoot up heroin all day, every day, uh, I'm not allowed to do that, so that is, again, bullshit. Today, we continue a never-ending journey to bridge the meaning of those words with the realities of our time. Yeah, what that means is that uh, uh, we're trying to find a way to, to take away your constitutional rights because we're under um, continuous attack by, I guess, terrorists or something. For history tells us that while these truths may be self-evident, they're not self-evident. They've never been self-executing. That's true. That while freedom is a gift from God, it must be secured by his people here on earth. Yeah, if we wanted to secure our freedoms, we would attack the government. The patriots of 1776 did not fight to replace the tyranny of a king with the privileges of a few or the rule of a mob. They gave to us a republic, a government. Wait, I thought he said democracy. Of and by and for the people. Uh, no, it is of, by, and for the people in power. And trusting each generation to keep safe our founding creed. Yeah, uh, looks like our generation has failed so far. In four more than 200 years, we have. Yeah, that's all about the change. Through blood drawn by lash and blood drawn by sword, we learned that no union founded on the principles of liberty and equality could survive half slave and half free. What the fuck? Yeah half slave and half free. We are living in a state of slavery right now. So quit giving me this bullshit about slavery being abolished. We made ourselves anew and vowed to move forward together. Together we determined that a modern economy requires railroads and highways to speed travel and commerce, schools and colleges to train our workers. Together we discovered that a free market only thrives when there are rules to ensure competition and uh, if there are rules to ensure competition, uh, it no longer becomes a free market. It becomes a controlled market. Fair play. Fair play. If you wanted real fair play, you would stop giving bailouts to bankers. You would stop uh, bailing out corporations like, like GM. And, um, yeah, fair play. It's really only fair play when, when the market is actually free. Um, actually, historically, it's found been found that monopolies can only exist due to government interference in the market. So free markets will lead to fair play. Together, we resolve that a great nation must care for the vulnerable and protect its people from life's worst hazards and misfortune. Now, I agree that we do need social programs, but I don't believe they need to be handled by the government. I believe that they could be handled on a charitable basis and would in fact make them more justifiable because they aren't uh, paid for uh, without the consent of the people who pay for them. Through it all, we have never relinquished our skepticism of central authority, 
Nor have we succumbed to the fiction that all society's ills can be cured through government alone. Our celebration of initiative and enterprise, our insistence on hard work and personal responsibility, these are constants in our character. We have always understood that when times change, so must we. Yeah, when uh, the economic collapse happens, it means that government needs to needs to step into the to the market to to uh, uh, so-called equalize it. Whatever. That fidelity to our founding principles requires new responses to new challenges. Yeah, we need to start putting drones in America because all of a sudden people are starting to. Uh, starting to stand up to their government. So, yeah, with these new challenges, we need new responses. By the way, did you know that uh, the, the State Department had a, had, um, a quiz for their, for their um, like an, an indoctrination quiz, which, uh, which said that uh, protests were considered low-level forms of terrorism? The preserving our individual freedoms ultimately requires collective action. Collectivism, yes, that's what we, in order, in order to be free, we need to give up our freedoms for, for um, everybody else. For the American people can no more meet the demands of today's world by acting alone than American soldiers could have met the forces of fascism or communism with muskets and militias. Wait, I thought that the Second Amendment was about muskets and militias. No single person can train all the math and science teachers we'll need to equip our children for the future or build the roads and networks and research labs that will bring new jobs and businesses to our shores. You know, if you want to really get those things going, open up the free market, allow people to, to develop independently and stop requiring them to follow your stupid regulations. Now, more than ever, we must do these things together as one nation and one people. Collectivism. Yay, let's, let's cheer for that. This generation of Americans has been tested by crises that steeled our resolve and proved our resilience. A decade of war is now ending. Uh, yeah, and a decade of new wars are now beginning. Hello, Syria and Iran. Maybe even Russia and China, who knows? <laughs> An economic recovery has begun. Yeah, tell that to the people who are actually going for this recovery. The economic recovery is not really going on. People are, are worse off and more indebted than they were um, at the start of it. America's possibilities are limitless, for we possess all the qualities that this world without boundaries demands. Youth and drive. Diver um, youth? We... We have um, the baby boomers are, are retiring now, and that's putting a huge strain on the social security system. Um, yeah, we have youth and we have drive, but there are no jobs to be had. Um, also, they're, the youth are horribly indebted, typically, by, um, by their, their college debt. So youth and drive may sound great and all, but uh, without the jobs being there, I mean, I, rec I recommend to these, to these youth to start your own business and go the agorist route. Like, I don't know, start selling drugs or something. Uh, that's a surefire way to make a lot of money. Diversity and openness. An endless capacity for risk and a gift for reinvention. My fellow Americans, we are made for this moment and we will seize it so long as we seize it together. We must seize it as individuals. You know, if, if we want to make a life, if we want to make a better life for ourselves, rather than asking the government to do it for us, um, just do it yourself. Like, pull yourself up by your own bootstraps and start up your own business. Start up a, your, own, your own market and get paid under the table. You know, that, that's the easiest way to make a lot of money and not have the government's fingers involved in it. For we, the people, 
You had you lost me at we. Understand that our country cannot succeed when a shrinking few do very well and a growing many barely make it. Yeah. Um, but you supported the bailouts, which basically gave seven hundred or so billion dollars to banks. Who are you to talk about how how the middle class is struggling and how the people at the top are doing so well? You you fucking enabled that shit. Also, Dodd Frank, you know, was written by the banks. So why would you, like, I, whatever? We believe that America's prosperity must rest upon the broad shoulders of a rising middle class. It's not going to happen while the government's in power. We know that America thrives when every person can find independence and pride in their work. When the way you want independence and pride in your work, become an agorist. Wages of honest labor liberate families from the brink of hardship. We are true to our creed when a little girl born into the bleakest poverty knows that she has the same chance to succeed as anybody else because she is an American. She is free and she is equal, not just in the eyes of God, but also in our own. Historically, it's shown that that's not actually true. It found that people um, tend to stagnate within their own, um, within their own so-called class. Um, I don't believe in middle class, upper class, etc. But, uh, but really, in terms of like their economic prosperity, it has, you know, statistically, it's borne out that uh, people tend not to branch outside. Not to say that it can't happen, because it does happen, but statistically, it doesn't happen. <laughs> We understand that outworn programs are inadequate to the needs of our time. So we must harness new ideas and technology to remake our government, revamp our tax code. Yeah, revamping the tax code? I gotta revamp. How about we just abolish taxation? You know, let people keep the money they earned. Reform our schools. <laughs> you know, when, when I hear a federal bureaucrat talking about uh, reforming schools, what that indicates to me is that uh, you're going to have a lot more indoctrination and a lot more um, control over the market of schools. And uh, that, so that, that, that monopolization uh, actually leads to lower quality. And empower our citizens with the skills they need to work harder, learn more, reach higher. But while the means will change, our purpose endures. A nation that rewards the effort and determination of every single American. That is what this moment requires. That is what will give real meaning to our creed. We, the people, still believe that every citizen deserves a basic measure of security and dignity. We must make the hard choices to reduce the cost of health care and the size of our deficit. Uh, yeah, the way to reduce the deficit, I would say, is to, is to go into default. You're never going to be able to abolish the debt. It's physically impossible. Um, no matter how much you tax, uh, the money is created with a debt system. So, um, no, you really can't ever, you can't fix, you may be able to fix trade deficits, but you, uh, you really can't fix the, the, the debt system that we have. But we reject the belief that America must choose between caring for the generation that built this country and investing in the generation that will build its future. For we were... And that's why payroll taxes went up. It's because I got to fund Social Security starting to go bankrupt. Remember the lessons of our past when twilight years were spent in poverty and parents of a child with a disability had nowhere to turn? We do not believe that in this country freedom... You know, the elderly nowadays, even with Social Security, a lot of them end up in poverty uh, just because they, there's not enough money that's being doled out to them that uh, will sustain them. Um, I believe in things like Social Security if it was, you know, locally driven. Um, you know, it makes it more of a human aspect rather than a, than a, uh, um, 
a numbers aspect, so. Is reserved for the lucky or happiness for the few. We recognize that no matter how responsibly we live our lives, any one of us, at any time, may face a job loss or a sudden illness or a home swept away in a terrible storm. The commitments we make to each other. Yeah, I mean, shit happens. But, you know, shit happens. Um, I mean, I hate to sound terse about this, but just because somebody falls out of, you know, a job, they should be taken care of, but it should be done on, on uh, uh, or, you know, if someone loses their house, everything should be done on a local basis. Um, and if it's, if it's a case of something like, like the Hurricane Sandy, where an entire section of the, of the country is, is affected, um, I'm sure that you're going to find plenty of people that are willing to donate to say, hey, I want to help these people rebuild. I mean, it, the government's just putting itself deeper and deeper in debt, which puts you and me deeper and deeper in debt when it pays for recovery projects like that. Through Medicare and Medicaid and Social Security, these things do not sap our initiative, they strengthen us. No, what they do is they don't necessarily strengthen us. What they do is they create this 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 process by which people end up thinking that they're oh well I've done my good deed. Um, it's not you know that the, the welfare itself and social security are like charities, right? Uh, they're really not. They're taken at, at the point of the gun, and maybe some people don't want to support um, social security. I mean, I mean, I don't know anybody who to opposes, you know, paying for or helping out the elderly or the sick or the, or the hurt. Um, but I think that paying for it with the butt of a gun or the, the, the pointy end of a gun, um, you know, forcing people to pay for it is not an ethical thing to do. They do not make us a nation of takers. They free us to take the risks that make this. Yeah, they do make you a nation of takers. Country great. We, the people, still believe that our obligations as Americans are not just to ourselves, but to all posterity. We will respond to the threat of climate change. No one oh, there it is. He said the climate change is there. Stand by for, I don't know, maybe carbon taxes or something. It's going to be interesting to see how, uh, how he handles that. Um, but... You can stand by for a lot of your freedoms, a lot of uh, economic regulations and a lot of pollution or uh, uh, environmental regulations coming your way that's going to actually prevent you from starting your own business. Claim that the failure to do so would betray our children and future generations. Some may still deny the overwhelming judgment of science. But none can avoid the devastating impact of raging fires and crippling drought and more powerful storms. The path towards sustainable energy sources will be long and sometimes difficult. But America cannot resist this transition. We must lead it. We cannot cede to other nations the technology that will power new jobs and new industries. We must claim its promise. Why? Why can't we let other nations um, uh, advance faster than us? You know, if if they want if they want to pursue that technology, let them. Um, if the free market wants to pursue that technology, let them. But to say that America needs to be ahead of everybody else on everything, um, it's just a it's a road to disaster because you can't be ahead of everybody else on everything. It's just going to lead to more debt and uh, uh, more spending. That's how we will maintain our economic vitality and our national treasure. Our forests and waterways, our croplands and snow-capped peaks. That is how we will preserve our planet, commanded to our care by God. That's what will lend meaning to the creed our fathers once declared. We, the people, 
still believe that enduring security and lasting peace do not require perpetual war. Uh, tell that to yourself. You know, yeah, security, um, you know, we don't really need security. What we need is to be able to handle ourselves. Um, we don't need the federal government taking care of us. Thank you. And also is his talk about, about we, we don't need never-ending war. It's like, uh, yeah, we do, because our country is basically built on war. So, yeah, the wars that we have right now are winding down, supposedly. I'll, <clears throat> I'll believe that when I see it, because uh, there's still troops in Iraq even though the war is over. So, um, I don't expect the wars to really die down anytime soon. And then as soon as those ones are done, we're going to have another false flag attack that's going to get us into a war with Iran or Syria. Our brave men and women in uniform, tempered by the flames of battle, are... The brave men and women in uniform. I was, I was a sailor. I was in the U.S. Navy. And um, no, there's nothing really brave about that. I mean, you go there, you do your job, and you're done. Um, you know, that's what you sign up to do. Bravery really has no nothing to do with it. Unmatched in skill and courage. Um, I would say that, uh, you know, there are people that can, that can match us in terms of skill and courage. I mean, the Taliban uh, has successfully beaten back um, and continues to do so, successfully beaten back the, the world's most advanced um, military. So uh, if you want to talk about skill, look at the Taliban. I mean, they've got AK-47s, and they've got, you know, improvised explosive devices, and they're taking down, you know, millions and do millions of dollars worth of equipment every time one of those goes off. And uh, so, you know, and they're doing it with, with $20 pieces of equipment. So in terms of skill, I'd say that the Taliban pretty much has us beat, considering they are outnumbered and, um, and overwhelmed in terms of technology. So they've got the skill. They've even got the courage, I would say, because because they're willing to fight back against against uh, um, you know foreign occupiers. Not to defend the Taliban, but uh, skill and courage. The Taliban definitely has that. Our citizens, seared by the memory of those we have lost, know too well. I believe that's a reference to 9/11. Um, it's obviously a reference to 9/11. Uh, I believe the government did 9-11, so, you know, if we really want to show our courage and, uh, you know, we want to get back the people that really did 9-11, we would go after the government. The price that is paid for liberty. The knowledge of their sacrifice will keep us forever vigilant against those who would do it. Oh, and of course they show um, a picture of a, I guess that's what, a commander or something? Or a lieutenant commander in the Navy? What's our... No, it's the Marine Corps. Yeah, he's in a Marine Corps pin. So what's that? I don't know. Major? Uh, something like that. I, it's been a while. But we are also heirs to those who won the peace and not just the war, who turned sworn enemies into the surest of friends, and we must carry those lessons into this time as well. We will defend our people and uphold our values through strength of arms and the rule of law. Rule of law. What is law? Law is nothing more than just a, an arbitrary, this is legal, this is not legal. Law really has nothing to do with goodness or virtue. It's basically just the government telling you what you can and can't do. We will show the courage to try and resolve our differences with other nations peacefully. Not because we are naive about the dangers we face, but because engagement can more durably lift suspicion and fear. Yeah, we, we engaged the hell out of, um, well, shit, drone strikes, let's see. Uh, Afghanistan, Iraq, Pakistan, Somalia, Yemen, um, where else, Libya? Yeah, we totally engaged them. America will remain the anchor of strong alliances in every corner of the globe. With plenty of military bases to make sure those alliances stay strong. We will renew those institutions that extend our capacity to manage crisis abroad. For no one has a greater stake in a peaceful world than its most powerful nation.
We will support democracy from Asia to Africa, from the Americas to the Middle East, because... Until they end up being democracies that don't like us, such as um, Ecuador, Venezuela, um, yeah. Um, democracy is good up until they don't like us, <laughs> and they, it's not good. Our interests and our conscience compel us to act on behalf of those who long for freedom. And we must be a source of hope to the poor, the sick, the marginalized, the victims of prejudice. Not out of mere charity, but because peace in our time requires the constant advance of those principles that our common creed describes and the constant advance of the tanks. Tolerance and opportunity, human dignity, and justice. When have we advanced any of those? We- This is bullshit. Bullshit. We, the people, declare today that the most evident of truths, that all of us are created equal, is the star that guides us still. Just as it guided our forebears through Seneca Falls and Selma and Stonewall, just as it guided all those men and women, sung and unsung, who left footprints along this great mall. To uh, did he just say that the idea that all men are created equal is what, is what pro propelled the, uh, the American Revolution? Because I'm pretty sure a lot of those people were still pro-slavery. So, no, it's not. That's not really the, the principle. It, Hear a preacher say that we cannot walk alone. To hear a king proclaim that our individual freedom is inextricably bound to the freedom of every soul on earth. Wait, what the fuck is he saying? It is now our generation's task to carry on what those pioneers began. For our journey is not complete until our until we have the new world order. Our wives, our mothers and daughters can earn a living equal to their efforts. Again, you're going to see free markets uh, being eroded because now you're going to have more regulations saying that uh, men need to be paid equal to women for the amount of work that they do. And, uh, you know, you're going to have, it's just going to be a whole new set of bureaucracies to go through. I mean, people are going to do it anyway, and if people are going to be paying men and women men and women differently, then they need to go out of business. They need to, they need to be exposed to what they are, and uh, I believe that if you if enough people know about what what these companies are doing, then they will go eventually have to either change their policy or go out of business. It doesn't require government intervention. Our journey is not complete until our gay brothers and sisters are treated like anyone else under the law. For if we are truly created equal, then surely the love we commit to one another must be equal as well. Yeah, well, it's nice of you to change your mind on that. I know you definitely didn't believe that the first time around. Probably because you needed to get elected. Our journey is not complete until no citizen is forced to wait for hours to exercise the right to vote. If the government was so efficient, like just look at the polling stations, yeah, they're, they're going to they're make changes to make sure that you don't have to wait four hours in line to vote. I believe when I see it. Our journey is not complete until we find a better way to welcome the striving, hopeful immigrants who still see America as a land of opportunity. Until bright young students and engineers are enlisted in our workforce rather than expelled from our country. Um, his discussion of immigrants, what's an immigrant? I mean, I believe in humanity. I don't believe in borders. So, like, what's an immigrant? Just a person who happened to be born in a different tax farm than, than the one we were born in? They're just people, just like you and me. Our journey is not complete until all our children from the streets of Detroit, to the hills of Appalachia, to the quiet lanes of Newtown, know that they are cared for and cherished and always safe from harm. Yeah, uh, we'll see how, how that goes when it comes down, when it comes to uh, 
um, drone strikes in America that I feel are coming soon, and uh, <laughs> and FEMA camps. Yeah, they're they're safe. They'll be safe behind barbed wire fences. That is our generation's task to make these words, these rights, these values of life and liberty and the pursuit of happiness. Bullshit. Real for every American. Being true to our founding documents does not require us to agree on every contour of life. It does not mean we all define liberty in exactly the same way or follow the same precise path to happiness. But we're going to tell you the paths you can use to get to your happiness. Progress does not compel us to settle centuries-long debates about the role of government for all time, but it does require us to act in our time. No, it doesn't. For now, decisions are upon us, and we cannot afford delay. We cannot mistake absolutism for principle, or substitute spectacle for politics, or treat name-calling as reasoned debate. We must act. We must act knowing that our work will be imperfect. We must act knowing that today's victories will be only partial and that it will be up to those who stand here in four years and 40 years and 400 years hence to advance the... No, the government won't be around in 400 years. I doubt it'll even be around in four years. Timeless spirit once conferred to us in a spare Philadelphia hall. My fellow Americans, the oath I have sworn before you today was a lie. Like the one recited by others who serve in this capital, was an oath to God and country, not party or faction. No, your oath was to the Constitution, not to God and country. And we must. I mean, come on, really? Must faithfully execute that pledge during the duration of our service. But the words I spoke today are not so different from the oath that is taken each time a soldier signs up for duty. Or an immigrant. Yeah, exactly. The soldier signs the or the soldier says the same oath that you do, which is to uphold the Constitution. And I hope that when it comes down to when it comes down to it, that those soldiers will take their oath um, seriously and not can not confuse the Constitution with the country. Realizes her dream. My oath is not so different from the pledge we all make to the flag that waves above and that fills our hearts with pride. Yeah, that pledge of allegiance to the flag. I mean, really, you're going to pledge allegiance to a piece of cloth? Come on. I mean, that's brainwashing, what they do. You know, having kids say it once a day, you know, all the way up through, what, high school? I mean, that's absolutely brainwashing. You have them repeat it over and over and over again, and it's hard to get out. They are the words of citizens, and they represent our greatest hope. You and I, as citizens, have the power to set this country's course. You and I, as citizens, have the obligation to shape the debates of our time, not only with the votes we cast, but with the voices we lift in defense of our most ancient values and enduring ideals. Yeah, I really hope people stand up for our ancient values and enduring ideas, because a lot of those are based on liberty, which is sort of an anarchist philosophy or anarchist uh, position. So uh, I really hope people do stand up for those ancient ideas of liberty. But um, we'll see how that goes, because Obama's certainly not going to do it. If people are really going to stand up for that shit, they gotta, they've got to fight actively against Obama. Let us each of us now embrace with solemn duty and awesome joy what is our lasting birthright. With common effort, and common purpose, with passion and dedication, let us answer the call of history and carry into an uncertain future that precious light of freedom. Thank you, God bless you.
and may he forever bless these United States of America. So, did, so Obama just referred to God as he. Does that mean that God, or does that mean that it's an explicit endorsement by the president of the Christian God, or the, the Muslim God, or what? Because it certainly isn't, uh, you know, because people think, well, God is not the Christian God. It's like just this concept of a higher, a higher power. And, um, you know, fuck that guy. Oh, God, I hate Obama so much. Like, I supported him back in 08, which I really feel, I really feel bad about. But uh, I didn't vote for him in 08 because I don't vote. But uh, it was certainly a better choice than McCain, and that was still at a time when I was, when I believed that, uh, you know, a lot, voting for the lesser of two evils was still the best option, um, or supporting the lesser of two evils. But now I see that Obama's really just as evil as George Bush was, and in fact, he's probably even more so considering the fact that he's escalated everything, that he signed the National Defense Authorization Act, uh, that he signed the National Defense Resources Preparedness Executive Order. Um, he, let's see what else he had. Um, uh, and secret kill lists. I guess every Tuesday he figures out who is, who is who's going to die and uh, has the counterterrorism um, group handle that. Uh, so, uh, yeah, basically he pro they prohibited protests um, in any place where the Secret Service is located, uh, which destroys the First Amendment. Um, he has drones over America now, uh, which George Bush didn't do. He ramped up the drone wars. Uh, something like hundreds of drones have, have, have flown under Obama and killed people, whereas there were like, well, like, like maybe a dozen under George Bush. Um, again, the assassination of Abdul Rahman al Awlaki, uh, an assassination of an American child who wasn't even suspected of a crime, targeted assassination. Um, you know, it's like George Carlin said, you know, rights aren't rights and if someone can take them away. You know, they're privileges. It's all we've ever had in this country is a bill of temporary privileges. And if you read the news, even badly, you'd know that every year the list gets shorter and shorter and shorter. So I'm signing off. Uh, I appreciate anybody who stayed and listened to this whole thing. Um, it really, this fucking depresses me. Like, like why are people still, still believe in it? Why do, they, why do they still believe in this guy? I mean, they're fucking sheep. Oh, God. Ah, it pisses me off. Anyway, I, I'm going to get going, but... Uh, uh, thanks for watching this. If you guys have any questions, comment, and I'll, if I get around to it, I'll, I'll answer them. Maybe. <laughs> Bye.